Hello friends, my name is Dr. Tarpan Shah and today I am going to give you an idea about role of physiotherapy in intensive care unit. As you all know, intensive care unit a very, is a very specialized uh, area in any hospital where all the staff, professional staffs are available for continuous 24 hours and all the equipments which we use for the treatment of the patient that is technologically very advanced and here we treat the patient who is in the critical stage. So we keep a constant observation on the patient, we do continuous monitoring of all the parameters and then we do the assessment and the management of the patient. So we try to bring back the patient from the critical stage to recovery stage. So later on we can improve the condition of the patient. So continuously we keep on working in the ICU uh, for the, uh, with the patient to improve from their critical stage. So close monitoring and constant medical care can be provided in the ICU for all the patient who is suffering from or having a life threatening conditions. So constant monitoring and close monitoring of all the parameters is possible for example heart rate, respiratory rate, okay, your blood pressure, oxygen saturation, okay, many many parameters of all the different systems can be monitored in the ICU. So after monitoring we can uh, do the modification in the treatment. Now the ICU care is a 24 hour management to the supporting failing life functions. So that can be provided in the ICU. It is a specialized area having a uh, specialized equipment and medical and nursing staff is available and continuously they monitor all the parameters and they provide the treatment. Now let us see what are the different types of ICU. So the very first one is neonates. For the neonates you have neonatal intensive care unit and ICU. For pediatric age group, you have a pediatric intensive care unit (PIC). For cardiac patient who is having a coronary artery related issues, you can uh, see that uh, you have a coronary care unit. Then a, pa a patient with the cardiac surgery, apart from coronary artery, you can uh, see a cardiac surgery intensive care unit. Then medical intensive care unit (MICU), medical as well as surgical condition, medical surgical intensive care unit. Then neuro intensive care unit that is also called an ICU, uh, burn intensive care unit BICU, trauma intensive care unit TICU, respiratory intensive care unit RICU, geriatric intensive care unit GICU, surgical intensive care unit SICU and even the advanced version of the ICU you can see intensive therapy unit. Now the ICU design, how, the, uh, how is the design of the ICU, it is a large windowless room where we maintain a constant temperature which will be same whether you are in India or whether you are in abroad or anywhere. So that is the you know the standard minimum we maintain. Ideally 8 to 12 bedded ICU is considered to be very best from the functional like uh, functioning point of view. So ideally the nursing station will be somewhere in the center and uh, all the patients will be there surrounding to the uh, corner all the corners of the uh, ICU and uh, all the parameters can be monitored even on the uh, computer screen of the nursing station. So this is the good thing you can see that uh, nursing uh, staff will have access and uh, to all the patient. Remember one thing in acute condition of any patient in a critical stage you require good space, good amount of space is required to treat that patient because number of drips, drains, lines and the monitoring system it will be more, very more. As the patient is getting recovered, okay, some of the monitoring is not required. So in that time, okay, uh, less space is required to treat the patient. And uh, of course, you will find in most of the ICU a separate uh, isolation room where the patients with the HIV, tuberculosis, hepatitis or any other uh, uh, infectious condition, they need to be admitted separately. Now, Basically, we use many intensive care uh, unit uh, specialized equipment like your ventilator, like your uh, defibrillator, like your suctioning machine, that many equipments we use in the ICU. So the use of this uh, equipment is to provide the life support and the emergency resuscitative equipment and uh, patient monitoring equipments that you will see in the ICU. So the first image here you can see that is a defibrillator uh, that we use when the patient is have uh, having a cardiac arrest and not getting recovered by the other means. We go with uh, this defibrillator and we give a cardiac shock to the patient. 
The second image you can see that is pulse oximeter where we measure the uh, oxygen saturation and the third image you can see that is of ICU monitor where you can see the uh, ECG pattern, uh, heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure and the many other parameters. Now here you can see the three different ventilators okay, from servo uh, 7 and 900 till Philips G and all the latest ventilators are available in the ICU. So it depends on which ICU you are working and which machine they have okay, but uh, basic functions remains the same. This all we use in the ICU. Here you can see in the first image that is uh, endotracheal tube. It is an uncuffed one. So it is used for the neonates, infants and the pediatric age group and the cuffed one it is used for uh, adults. The second image is of a Riles tube which is also called as the nasogastric tube. So through which you can provide uh, uh, liquid, uh, liquid material to the patient for the uh, parental nutrition so coconut water or a juice or etc that can be provided to the patient and uh, the rest uh, two image you can see for that is for the cot that means uh, th that is a bed uh, which you can uh, bend it from the different side okay so that patient can see it okay and uh, certain modifications you can do it okay many uh, many of them are manual one and many of them are automatic one also now uh, it is very imperative to know about the labels of ICU so that depends on the nature of the facilities providing uh, the care and the clinical standard which they maintain and uh, how many staffs they have recruited. So label 3 one though it is uh, third in number but it is the highest uh, uh, in providing the care to the uh, patient who is in the ICU. So it is if any level 3 ICU if you see okay they should be able to provide a complex multi-system life support for indefinite period of time okay without limit. It is also like you know tertiary referral center for the patients in need of uh, intensive care services and it has extensive backup of laboratory and the clinical service facilities. It is a very advanced setup. Mechanical ventilation can be provided, extracorporeal renal support services can be provided and invasive cardiovascular monitoring for indefinite period or a care of a similar nature can be provided. Level 2 is slightly uh, providing less facilities to uh, the patient okay? but again it is providing good facilities like capable of providing complex multi-system life support, mechanical ventilation, extracorporeal renal service and invasive cardiovascular monitoring also. And for several days or for longer period in remote area or a care of a similar nature can be provided by level 2 whereas in the level 3 it was for indefinite period of time. Level 1 it is providing less facility even compared to the level 2. So it is capable of providing a basic multi-system life support usually for less than 24 hours. Afterwards if the patient required uh, you know monitoring and treatment they have to be shifted to the another place. So mechanical ventilation and uh, simple invasive cardiovascular monitoring for a period of at least several hours or a care of a similar nature can be provided in the level 1 ICU. Now Hudson et al in the year 1985 they have given a definition of a patient monitoring what it is. So repeated and continuous observation or measurement of the patient and his or her physiological function and function of large support equipment for the purpose of guiding the management decision what we are doing that is called patient monitoring. Repeatedly we observe or the measure certain parameters and why we measure to improve uh, you know uh, patients from this particular condition okay to make a good decision for the providing good treatment we do a monitoring. Now critical care setup uh, in India actually. Uh, so there is a shortage of ICU bed in many of the hospitals and the shortage of a trained manpower. You hardly see or very rarely you see that a specialized therapist are available, specialized professionals are available for giving the treatment. So this is all there is always a shortage of a trained manpower. Logistics also not being clearly defined. Uh, I have gone through the researches. For nurse to patient, there is a 1 raise to 1 ratio. You will find some studies, but therapist to patient ratio, still I have not found it. But uh, one thing is uh, sure that when the patient is in acute condition, we need a good space to treat the patient because of the many drips, drains, and lines and the other monitoring system which is placed. And as the patient is improving, okay, the number of monitoring system. Uh, required will be less. So what will happen? The amount of space required to treat the patient that will be 
uh, less. So this logistics of ICO, it is an area for doing the research. Now what is the protocols for the patient care in the ICU? The first thing is daily round uh, should be done with the uh, person who is the head of the intensive care unit or the team who is working with the ICU. It may be intensivist, chest physician or the anesthetist or any other individual. And that protocol for the patient care, it should include when and how the multidisciplinary team round should be conducted. Remember one thing, the successful outcome of any ICU uh, will be that how the team members are uh, cooperating with each other. It's actually a teamwork and teamwork always wins. So that we always need to remember when we are working in the ICU. Keep your ego at one side, keep everything at one side, focused on the patient and try to give your best. So patient's plan of care uh, that has been decided at the round and as I told in, in, uh, intensivist or at the other uh, appropriate uh, qualified physician will review all the admissions within the first 24 hours to determine if the patient is admitted properly or should the patient should be transferred to the another unit. Let's suppose the patient is admitted in level 2 ICU and the intensivist is reviewing the case and find that okay the patient is need to be shifted to the level 3 ICU so that decision has to be taken in the first 24 hours. Hospital should have inpatient plan and protocol for transferring the patient as needed. So just suppose if it is a level 1 ICU they should have a plan and they need to have a protocol that if the uh, you know more uh, time is required for for monitoring and treatment they should shift it to level 2 ICU or they should shift it to the level 3 ICU so that has to be clearly defined even hospital should have in place regional referral networks for the complex cases so every hospital has access to the specialty and subspecialty care required by the critical ill patient so sometimes if uh, you know a patient is in really critical stage so uh, hospital should be able to provide uh, you know, good ambulance, uh, ambulance facility to transfer it to the another hospital or sometimes through the air ambulance or sometimes you know uh, you can ask for the opinion uh, through the telemedicine or the tele rehab concept by the person who is expert maybe sitting in some other country or a state and then you can uh, try to work on the patient so sometimes especially if a, a simple physician or the therapist is working in a rural or the tribal area so with the help of the technology okay, they can be guided by uh, experts in the field so even the ordinary or the uh, simple uh, physician they can work as an extraordinary physician or the extraordinary therapist and they can provide a good treatment okay at that particular moment now every hospital should have an assess to its ability to provide sim uh, complete range of care identify the gaps in the care that it provides they should know their weaknesses also that while they are not able to provide a good treatment develops a plan for referring the patient to the other hospital for the care which they are not providing and these are the things which we need to see that central line associated bloodstream infection it should not happen Central line utilization, use it properly for uh, giving the medicine, okay, or use it properly. Deep vein throm uh, thrombosis prevention, for that you can use uh, anti embolytic stokings, ankle toe movement, okay, early ambulation. Many interventions are available, so that can be taken care. Nutrition, whether it has to be uh, provided through the Ryles tube or through the gastrogenic tomato tube, etc., so that has to be properly taken care use of sedation for the anxious patient or for the uh, many patient okay you need to use some sedation as well how to prevent the stress gastritis okay like many patients they develop the uh, gas, uh, stress gastritis so for prevention of that maybe antacids or what modification is required in a diet that has to be planned out proper glycemic control so that blood glucose level can be maintained properly in the icu for all the patient and here is a point weaning from the ventilator okay it is the uh, very very important point where the therapist will uh, work with the patient and uh, providing some facilitatory technique inhibitory technique and many hands-on techniques so that you can improve the uh, strength of the muscle uh, you can facilitate the muscle you can inhibit the muscle so which is required okay then what are the ICU safety tips if you want to work safely in the ICU the very first thing is don't make any assumption open communication among the ICU team it is a key element for the successful teamwork and teamwork always wins so ask the questions rather than making any assumptions 
clearly label the patient's beds so that it will be easy for the therapist or the patient to uh, a physician to identify the detail of the patient verify the patient identification by verbally communicating with the patient or check the patient's identification band or you can even talk with the nursing staff what is the medical emergency criteria for admitting the patient in the icu just suppose when your uh, phys normal physiology is altered temperature is less than 34.5 or it is greater than 39.5 if it is more it can be termed as a pyrexia which indicates some infection or inflammation is going on systolic blood pressure why if it is less than 100 or if it is more than 200 respirations per minute okay less than 10 or more than 40 so it can be tachypnea or a bradypnea if it is more it is called tachypnea if it is less it is called bradypnea pulse rate okay less or more if it is more tachycardia if it is less, it is bradycardia. Urine output, it should be less than 50, uh, 500 ml per day. Uh, then patient needs to be uh, admitted in the ICU. Decreased level of consciousness, Glasgow coma scale, you find uh, it is less, you need to admit the patient. Abnormal pathology, for example, potassium is uh, increased or decreased, sodium increased or decreased, blood glucose level increased or decreased arterial pH okay if it is uh, more or less than the normal range base axis if it is more or less than the normal range and uh, this is general now a specific like uh, cardiovascular conditions when the patient is having a cardiopulmonary arrest patient is having a pulmonary edema patient is having arrhythmia it can be tachy or a bradyarrhythmia respiratory conditions like acute severe asthma status asthmaticus acute uh, respiratory failure or the upper airway obstruction it can be because of a tumor it can be because of swelling a coin marble or many things okay surgical like excessive bleeding following any surgery shock if the patient is having hypovolemic anaphylactic cardiogenic or the septic shock metabolic like patient is having acute diabetic emergency so diabetic coma okay or poisoning or a trauma cases like your near drowning carbon monoxide poisoning or the severe drug overdose obstetric conditions like amniotic fluid embolism neurological like status epilepticus acute psychiatric disturbance like aggressive aggressiveness with which is uncontrolled so this group of the patient needs to be admitted into the icu so it's a good place to work where you can help the patient to come out from the critical stage and physiotherapists play a very vital role in treating the patient in the intensive care unit. It's not only restricted to the cardiac and uh, pulmonary cases will be admitted in the ICU, even the neurological case, orthopedic case, okay, your gynec case, pediatric neonates, okay, all each group of the patients you will find over there. And after any major surgery, okay, the patient will be uh, shifted to the ICU. And whenever uh, they do a major surgery and they use uh, spinal anesthesia, okay, what will happen? The effects of the anesthesia on the respiratory system, as you know, okay, it will decrease the ciliary movement and there will be accumulation of secretion. So what will happen for that? Physiotherapist will help a lot. So many a group of the patients will be able to treat in the ICU. Remember only one difference that here we treat the patient from the critical care and you can continue up to the rehabilitation. This is how this branch is different than the other branches of physiotherapy. I hope you like this video. Okay, uh, thank you for watching the video. In the next part, you will see that assessment and management in the intensive care unit. Thank you very much.